name is Ethan Skoll. Hello, my name is Madeline Halpin. Hello, my name is Donovan Wilson. With the widespread use of fossil fuels throughout the world, pollution has increased at a huge, at a large rate. And with it came comes all the issues related. According to Alina Bradford, an administrator for a organization named CNET, which is a organization, toxic toxic pollution affects more than 200 million people worldwide. This has led my group to, to the question of to what extent does air pollution by the consumption of fossil fuels affect the United States? Today, our modern world relies too heavily on non-renewable resources. As you can see here by this chart, the highest most used non-renewable resource is oil. And the second most used is coal and then followed by natural gas. And you can see that the renewable resources are least used out of all these charts. The hydropower and then nuclear and then other renewable resources only starting to be used in the recent 2000s. Now, as Donovan had previously said in the uh, beginning, pollution is uh, increasing as today, ever since factories have been made. From this quote from John Vidal, outdoor pollution has risen 8% from the past five years. This goes to show how pollution is not stopping anytime soon and needs to be prevented at any cost in order to prevent damage. Damage such as uh, annual deaths from the outdoor pollution by region. As North America's second highest, with over 4 million uh, annual deaths, which is about 1% of the United States population. Now, from the chart, uh, this chart is from the Institute of Health Metrics and Health Evaluation, and it shows the uh, amount of deaths, annual deaths increasing year by year from 1990 to 2016. It's only increasing and will not be prevented unless there is a solution. So, a solu potential solution we have come across is air purifier for major cities. Cities such as San Francisco, New York, and Houston, where most factories are made and where most pollution is located. Uh, this tower uh, creates a better environment, well-suited environment for the people and all the animals living in there in order to help the health of the people. So this quote, however, there are some limitations that come with this air purifier. Limitations such as the time consumption to uh, create these buildings and the amount of money it costs. From this quote from Stephen Chin, the Xan Tower project was launched by the Academy in 2015 and construction was completed in 2018. So this shows this tower was created in three years of time, which could take decades to create throughout the entire system. The limitation of cost factors is a main concern because the United States currently is in debt and trying to find any way in order to create, get money. This quote from Denise Chow, the prototype tower prototype tower in Xan costs two million to build. With this it would cost about probably uh, one hundred million just to build towers within the major cities that are required. So as so another one of the main issues that comes with trying to reform things with uh, fossil fuel is, is the industry itself. Well, according to a journalist for Forbes by the name of Neil McCarthy, there could be as many as 1.1 million people working in the industry in the U.S. And as such, any sort of change that comes, any sort of change that uh, could threaten could threaten these industries could lead to a loss of jobs and would face heavy resistance. Now. According to an article done by Kiang Zai, a professor at Auburn University, he suggests that it may be it may be better to use a partial implementation in order to not, ne not necessarily getting rid of fossil fuels, but using clean energy to supplement the uh, fossil the fuels that are already there, leading us to the solution of perhaps of a uh, slow integration of, of clean energy over time in order to make it to where eventually we could reach those, we could reach a time where we function completely off clean energy. However, some of the limitations of this would be uh, lobbyists in the government for these big industries who would resist any sort of change that doesn't necessarily, that could, nece that could cost them money. And uh, with, cur with the current administration as it is, uh, there would be a heavy resistance against uh,
change, changing uh, things that could potentially lead to a loss of jobs. Our optimal solution, we, our optimal solution is solar farms. Through the study and research that we have conducted throughout our project and writing our papers, we have figured out that solar farms will be the optimal solution because because it creates a large amount of energy in not that in not that long time. Solar panels, solar farms are just solar panels in a large cluster. It takes many smaller modules and creates them into a wide open a wide open plane for the solar farm. Um, there are many places that solar farms can be instituted, instituted, especially in places such as Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona, because there are many deserts that are not suitable for people to live in, but it's a lot of open land that you could stick a solar farm in. Solar, solar energy is a renewable resource which will help cut down on pollution and will still maintain the amount of energy that people need to sustain everyday living. Some limitations and implications of this is definitely cost, but as technology improves, it will end up it will end up paying for itself because the cost will go down as the technology improves and more people will be able to have solar farms. So the energy, so the surplus of energy created by this will make up for the getting rid of the coal industry. One way we can. One way we can institute solar farms is having the federal government give, give grants to people so they can establish their own farms and so that companies can replace their coal burning and oil use with solar panels. Um, it says here in this chart that the price of solar panel per watt has gone down exponentially since 1970 to current day and that more people have been instituting solar panels all over the world. As she, say, as she stated earlier, um, though the price will be high eventually, though the price will be high right off the bat, eventually as time goes on our technology will increase and we will be able to manufacture these things for less and thus end up with this, it makes it easier for us to avoid the health impacts of pollution. And as these things are huge facilities, they're going to require construction. They're going to require construction and maintenance. So creating more, creating more jobs, and maybe if they don't replace, but to help ease the burden. With the solar farms, it would create a better environment for all the creatures, including humans to small insects to plants. It will uh, provide a better ecosystem for the, all the uh, creatures. It would also create less diseases for the people, uh, for less illnesses. So, like, there could be more productive productivity within jobs and less illnesses within like factories, and also improve health qualities. So there's not as like there's not uh, genetic disorders like within birds or. So as we have all stated, the solar farm will eventually pay for itself in the future because the, because the technology costs will go down as technology improves. The pollution will decrease over the future because the solar farms do not create pollution because they take energy straight from the sun and it will slow the effects of global warming because there are less factories burning coal, creating less carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide and it does not kill the planet. Thank you. Ethan, what was the strongest counter argument to the solution or conclusion that your team identified and why? The strongest counter argument to our uh, resolution of solar farms is, will probably be the jobs because people who work on the, we uh, were mentioning to replace the factories with uh, solar farms and finding more jobs to uh, replace the jobs from the factory labor would be a hard problem. Maggie, give one specific way that your thinking changed as a result of learning about Donovan's findings. Um, one way my, one, 
question? Please repeat the question. Give one specific way that your thinking changed as a result of learning about Donovan's findings. One specific way my thinking changed as a result of learning Donovan's findings is I initially agreed, I initially thought that um, solar farms would be the best way to, would be, would be to fix the problem of pollution, but learning Donovan's finding, we figured out that technically both of our solutions would be the best way, considering we would have to use his solution to institute my solution. In what way did you improve your ability to work with a group as a result of this project? Um, so a lot of my problems were a lack of communication and a general inability to come across my, to uh, state what I was thinking at the time. And as time went on, I was able to remediate that. Okay, thank you very much.